now you're probably wondering about a couple of things that I mentioned, like shades and brown, and how do you mix them with the primaries and secondaries. Shades are just like the tints, but you're mixing with black rather than white. So let's turn the page upside down, start with a little patch of black, go very lightly because a little does a lot for you, and take some red. Let's go for a nice dark red maroon color. Here's the red the way the red is, looking all nice and bright. And now we're going to go down into the nice gothy dark maroon, which almost does look black. And we'll keep doing the circular strokes here to make a soft transition between the black and the red and get a nice dark maroon down. Now, that looks black, but what happens when we put actual black next to it? You can probably see... Yes, you can. You can see that is a dark red right in the middle. Go very lightly with black when you're making shades. A little bit will do you. See, now this is a more understandably red, black-red shade. Mixing shades takes a little bit of work to get it done well. But it means you can get a small set and make it act like this large set. I don't happen to have a dark blood red here, but I do have a dark red brown. That's pretty close in value to the mixed dark red that I have. But you'll see that it's a little yellower. How do I mix brown with just the primaries? Well, let's scrub this red down and get it clean, because I didn't wipe it off. Get some red on there. Now we're going to mix some purple, because we're going to add some blue to it. Okay, we're getting purple here. Purple's looking good. Nice dark purple, because there's still a little black in there. Black pigments often have a touch of uh, blue in them, so they may act like a dark blue when you're mixing up things. Now, going over it again with yellow, you can see I'm starting to mix mud. But that mud's a pretty interesting brown color, isn't it? I went over purple with yellow. Yellow and purple are opposite each other on the color wheel. And look at what we get. We get a nice neutral. Neutrals are all tertiaries, too. Anything that takes a primary and a secondary is a tertiary. Two secondaries together. Now, of course, I've got mud on the end of my yellow. But when I want to stir that around with little circular strokes, what I'm getting is a nice yellow ochre color, not too far from the actual yellow ochre stick, which I'll put next to it for comparison. My mixed color is a little bit redder, not much, more like a raw sienna. So we'll put some of the raw sienna right next to it. Oh, yeah, we got a good mop match. This is why having a large set is a lot of fun. Now, there's other ways of mixing. Let's talk about optical mixing. I'm going to put some pink dots here, like a pointless paper painter. Pink, nice, bright, obvious color. I'm going to use some bright blue. This is a lighter, greener blue. And come putting some blue pointillist dots, and if you squint or blur, this transition is going to start looking purplish, even though I'm not actually going over the colors. What happens when I start adding white dots that start to mix the little colors is that now I've got lighter pinks and lighter blues going into the mixture, but you can still see a pattern to it. There's some lavender where it's mixing, but it's a livelier purple than if I was just mixing the pink and the blue together. Here's pink and blue mixture. Overlaid, you get a nice lavender. Very cool. Or you have this pointless texture. But there's other ways to do it. Let's try cross-hatching. 
cross hatching is when you're drawing a bunch of little lines going this way and that. They don't have to be perfect, believe me, this is a texture we're doing. And another form of optical mixing happens when you cross hatch with another color over that. Now I want that combination a little pinker, so we'll go over it again with a different pink. And surprise, we're starting to get somewhere, but each color is still distinct in this patch. If you're working large, you can shade with something like this and get a livelier effect. Or, you can lay down an undercolor and then shade over that with other colors. Let's try greens over pink. Now that's a compliment. That's another complimentary pair because pink is a form of red. And the green, well, this is a yellower green. So we're kind of making a warm combination here. When the lines are closer together, you get an almost solid effect. When the lines are farther apart, you see more of the color under it. Again, if you work large, you're going to get more. What happens when I put a little olive green over that? Oh my, the shading is starting to get interesting. And then we'll just shade from there into solid olive green, and you can see it makes its own kind of smooth transition. Olive green would be that bright green, and a little bit of brown. It's actually another tertiary. So let's sketch some of the emerald green here, and pick up a nice dry brown to go over it. The yellowest looking brown. And we get a dark olive, which you don't have in the set. But let's put it up next to the olive that is in the set and see what happens. We'll put the darker color under it, the brighter, lighter color over it. And now I've got two shades of olive green. And I could do like army camo with this instead of being stuck with just the army green that it came with the set. So no matter how many colors you have, mixing colors in oil pastels, is essential. You need to play with it, practice, fool around with it, try out different things. Remember, shades are a color mixed with black. Tints are a color mixed with white. Browns and neutral colors happen when you're mixing all three primaries or several secondaries or anything else. There isn't anything beyond tertiary. You don't get quaternary colors when you use four different hues. What color it is, that's hue. That's yellow, purple, green. What value it is, that's how dark or light it is. Purple is the darkest, yellow is the lightest. Red and green can be just about the same in value sometimes, and that can make it interesting when you're trying to shade something. But we'll go into that in tone. Enjoy. Get yourself a big set and experiment. Have fun.